Welcome, welcome, welcome. I know y'all are happy to be here tonight. Well, guess what? You have showed up to one of probably the best performances that Word of Truth has ever put on. Tonight is the night that we, whew, we see the Garden of Scars, and I am sitting right now with the woman who is responsible for this beautiful production. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls all over the world, I want to introduce to you Miss Kristen. Hi, everyone. Yeah, can you say your last name? Because sometimes I be jacking up yeah, that G you word. Yeah, you did. You did my first mm. name, too, when we first met. But anywho, Ooh, it is Jesus. Kristen Gillum. Gillum. Is, yes, Kristen Gillum. Yes, yes. Yes. This lady right here is amazing. I'm talking about, that's Pastor Eben's word, word of truth. Come on, how many words is that? Three words. How many words is that? Three words. Because I know y'all didn't say it the first time, so I'm going to do it again. How many words is that? I said it's three words. Three All right. Words. Amazing. So. I want you to go ahead and let us know what inspired this beautiful production. You know, um, it was 100% inspired by Pastor Eben's message um, when he preached on scars last year for Easter. And so I created this play. It's in three acts. And one of the things that Pastor talked about was identifying your scars, confessing your scars. And so that is act one of the play. And so we're able to really, I'm just going all into like what we're doing now. Go Here ahead we go. then, go so, ahead. Yeah, so act one is identifying, confessing your scars. And so I really wanted to portray stories in the Bible, parables of people who were scarred and hurt. Um, physically, right? So they have physical scars. And then I had my modern day characters on screen and they also had physical scars, but there were spiritual scars, what I call like scars buried beneath the skin. And so act one is really just identifying your scars and confessing those scars one to another. And then we went to act two, we talked about surrendering your scars. And that was one of the things that came from Pastor's message too when he mm. taught on this series. And like, how do we surrender our scars? What does the Garden of Gethsemane represent? That altar where God laid, he like gave up his life in the garden, right? He surrendered himself. And that is like my analogy, like the garden itself and the altar by which God like gave himself as a sacrifice. It started there when he surrendered, right? And so act two is surrendering those scars and giving them to God and understanding like he bore all pain, he bore all sickness, whether that's a, physical sickness, yeah. um, the spiritual sicknesses that we carry, the right. spiritual scars that we carry, mental health, church hurt, all the things, right? And so it's important to portray that in Act 2. And then Act 3 is the what I call beautiful scars segment when we just take the opportunity to sh not only share our scar stories, but when Jesus died and rose, right, he had scars on his hand. Right. But I really, really do believe he could have actually came out of the grave with no scars. Mm. But it was important for him to keep his scars and to show his disciples that it was me. Like, this is me. I'm a walking miracle. I bore these scars for you. So he, he didn't erase them. He wanted people to understand that I walked the earth just like you did. I bore scars for you. And he was able to really, I think, show that when he rose from the dead and, like, showed his scars. So I think for us as humans, we have scars and we have the obligation as Christians to really share our scar stories with each other. And that's how deliverance takes place, right? Mm. Sharing our, like, I got, just hearing your stories, right? right? Of how you were healed and delivered and forgiveness. And right. just hearing those stories from you helps me to get healed. Hearing wow. First Lady stories, right? right. Um, First Lady Sharice um, Connor and hearing her stories. Like, those stories are all about healing. And it is through those stories where, you know, we really help each other to walk in our deliverance. And so, I think it was important that, you know, when he rose and showed his scars, like they are beautiful. The things that we went through, those, those things are beautiful, right? Mm. And so one, the things that we hide, the fear, the doubt, and the pain, once God delivers us, right, it's a process. That's another thing about this play. We show the process, and some people are instantly healed, right? And then some of us, it's a process. Mm. Some of us, we're just, we, we end the story with showing the beginning of our stories, yeah, right? Yeah. It's important to show the quick healings and then those that take process to heal. Uh, and so um, scars are just, it's just so many different things. We can go deep into scars itself, but that's kind of the, the gist of the story is really, um, you know, identifying, confessing, surrendering your scars, and then understanding that these scars are really, really beautiful scars. Missionary Christian, uh, Christian Gillum is coming to a church near you because you just preached the whole sermon. I mean, ma'am, you just went, like, from zero to 100 real quick. I took over. Sorry. Zero to 100 real quick. Like, straight <laughs> up. Yeah, yeah, No, yeah. that was so good. So help the people understand um, you do more than just write the production, the play, the script. You also wrote the music. 
I did. You know, um, it was important for me. You know, last year you let me write one song. Uh -huh. You know, they let me write one. And I was like, Pastor Polo, I got a few more, you know. And so I really think, you know, God, like, downloads stuff to me. He downloads the script to me. He tells me exactly what to write. And I never write anything without asking him first. Like, what should I do? It's not mm. about me and my desires. And, yes, I want to do certain things. But I really want all of my plays to be anointed. Mm. And I think what separates me potentially from anybody else really is the anointing that God has placed on me and me being able to really just write. And sometimes I don't want to write and I get upset and God like, no, you got to write. And I never, I didn't understand it at yes. first, but now as I'm here and God has placed me in this ministry, I understand now why he told me to write. And so when I presented it to Pastor Polo, I actually had like about seven songs. Oh. And, I, and I told him, I was like, we don't have to use them all. We can use some, not all. And so a couple of them almost cut. And he was like, Kristen, that song was great. I'm like, well, that one almost got cut. But um, mm -hmm. wrote, wrote a little, you know, some rap songs. And that mm -hmm. was kind of a little out of my element. And so, uh, yeah, it was wait, a lot wait, of fun. Wait, 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 wait. Don't let that just fly by, y'all. Yo, she wrote the rap. So we have... A save Nicki Minaj in the building. You yeah, understand yeah. what I'm saying? You understand? Like, she love the Lord. You know I what I'm saying? I she love even him. with that Barbie stuff. That's All right. right. But that's she, right. Had, oh, Robo, here oh, oh, I felt that. Hey, hallelujah. I, Come oh, on now. Yeah, I felt yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, <laughs> she did that. What I love about you the most is you're so humble. Yeah. You're so great. You're so good at what you do, but you build everyone else up. And I am so honored to be able to introduce you and your work to the world because, man, listen, this is about to go to the next level. Yeah, I do believe that. Oh, it's next level. Yes, I do. And so we're about to bring on her twin. Well, not really, yeah, but something like that. A little bit. And we're just going to see how they look. So, Kristen, thank you so much for thank being here. And um, you tell me whether or not they twins or not. I told y'all. I, I, I <laughs> told you. I told you. I told you. Ladies and gentlemen. Make some noise for my boy, Corey Gillum. <laughs> What's up, man? What's going on, bro? How you feeling tonight? I'm feeling good, man. Feeling awesome, good. man. Awesome. So listen, real quick, I know you're a man of few words, yes. so I'm not going to hold you too long, but I appreciate you for just kicking it with me for a moment. I want to pull you from the background. Okay. Because you one of them people, you okay with staying in the in the background. Absolutely. I'm not okay <laughs> with you being in the background. <laughs> right. I ain't going to be okay. I got to pull you out. So tell the people right now... What's your role in this whole creative team? And what's your role when it comes to um, productions? Okay. So um, when it comes to, like, the productions, I handle, like, like you mentioned, a lot of the behind the scenes. So things like logisticals, like making sure that people are fed, mm -hmm. making sure that there's, you know, snacks, making sure that... Um, everything is kind of flowing in kind of an organizational standpoint, um, kind of the back end stuff where everybody else is kind of running around. Mm -hmm. I'm giving the A, B, C, D, E, F, G to make sure it's kind of flowing that way. I also, I help with the props. Uh, props and wardrobe is something I'm heavily involved in. Um, definitely with the, uh, you know, the, um, you know, yeah, stuff. the costumes yeah. and like, you know, other people's in, input and stuff like that as well. It's a team effort, but sure. um, like, like going out to the places and, you know, having to negotiate yeah. with the, like, hey, this is for my church. And, you know, oh, he's uh, a business man. <laughs> he's a business, you know, man. Yeah. Things like that. So, you know, like you said, a lot of a lot of behind the scenes. Um, and at the end of the day, I'm, I'm just really there to support wherever it's needed. Um, you know, whether it be, you know, hopping on the camera, whether it be jumping backstage, helping somebody get dressed, whether it be helping with the makeup, special effects, whatever it may be, um, just, just wherever I can assist, that's where I like to do. Corey, you are like one of those people I like to call a secret weapon because you really like to stay in the shadow so much the way you really are a secret. Like, it's just you and eyes, you know, like he just standing somewhere in the dark with just eyes, just, you know, beaming everywhere. But his mind, man, his mind just works so well. And what I love about you the most, man, is that you're just a team player. Yep. Like, and, and, and don't y'all hear that soft voice, man? I mean, it just sounds like velvet, don't it? <laughs> don't it just sound like, he's like yeah, you know. Um, yeah, I just want to help with the props and feed the people. Sounded like Velveeta, Velveeta cheese. Don't they still? He sound like cheese. Boy, you just dripping on him. What? <laughs> I know. I'm just making them all. I'm just messing them up right now. Anyway, there is something that I noticed about this production. You went over and above when it came to the costumes. Now, come on, man. Walk me through your, your, your ideas. Like, how did your mind, like, get to the point where you just like, hey, I want to do it like this? What? Talk, walk me through your thought process. Well, I'm always uh, trying to think outside the box. Um, you know, we a lot of people have seen a lot of different plays, especially around Easter. So they kind of already tend to have an idea of what they're going to see. I wanted to make sure that, 
you're not going to see the type of costumes and wardrobe we have. You're not going to see it in any other Easter production in 2023. You're going to see it next year because they're looking at us, but you're not going to see it anywhere else. Like, you know, we, we went as far as to get stuff like handmade from Ukraine, you know, where it takes six weeks to ship over and I'm having to use Google Translate to try to communicate with the lady. And Google sure. Translate! <laughs> So I mean, other places overseas too, but we just we just made sure that when, like when certain parts of the play come up, you're gonna see you're gonna know what I'm talking about when you see it. But you're gonna it's it's just think of if you never saw before, and then you're seeing how everything can be illuminated and just exaggerated to the fullest extent. I'm out of here, man. I tried to tell y'all this Joker is over here using Google Translate to talk to people who don't speak English to get costumes that we don't have in America. Only at Word of Truth will we do some mess like that. All right. Bro, come on, man. Is there anything that you just want to just tell the people? Is there anything else that's on your heart that you just want to just share about this story that, that penetrates you without telling the story? Absolutely. Anything. One thing I will say when working with my sister, like on her productions and things, when we're reading through the scripts and like pre-production, I always make sure that there is, that I'm getting a word for myself. And I'll tell her, like, if I didn't get nothing out of a scene or I didn't get nothing out of the full script, I was like, hey, you got to go back. It didn't relate. It needs to be something else. So I would say for this one, you're going to see yourself in here. You got to find yourself, but you're going to see yourself in here. There's going to be some healing that take place, both physically and emotionally. And, and again, look for your word. Look for your opportunity. Look for your breakthrough because you're going to get it. We all have scars. Y'all, I don't know about y'all, but are y'all just ready right now? Are y'all ready for us to just go ahead and just press the play button and get everybody ready? Are y'all ready? Well, we ain't ready for you because I got one more person that's coming. This guy right here, he is a man of few words. But when I snap my fingers, I'm going to bring to you a man of many words. You'll see. <laughs> 